Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms, and today we're going to take a 800 megahertz 5 8 wave antenna and use it on VHF. Uh, these things actually will function on VHF if necessary, and there's little modifications you can do to it to improve the performance of it. And these antennas here were a 3 decibel over a dipole gain antennas for 800 systems and they're you can pick them up for next to nothing you see them in you know by the droves at ham fests or being thrown out or whatever have you or old cellular telephone antennas which such as this which is an elevated feed which those of you from the bag phone days will definitely remember these and uh, like I said these antennas will make surprising performers at VHF which I'm going to show you right now now, when you come across these antennas here, these were an elevated feed right here, and these things were set up on a trunk lip type mount. But what's important to remember with these antennas, and when you're trying to repurpose them for VHF is, is that there is no continuity between the shield and the clamp mount here. So there's really no effective counterpoise when you use one of these. So that being the case, what I always do is, is I just merely use the resonator off of this by spinning this off. And then in the body of it here, when you break it loose, what you can see is, you can see your clamp mount here and how it stops right there and how it just has an O-ring base on it. So what you can do is, or what I prefer to do is, is I just basically cut this RG174 size jumper off right here and repurpose that as an adapter or a, uh, you know, put an SMA connector on it and utilize that and then merely use the resonator on this and as you'll see this resonator is slightly longer than the other one so that being said what we're going to do is is we're going to go ahead and cannibalize the resonator out of this antenna here Let's see if we can get that one out there there he goes and you can see that that is a longer resonator and what we're going to do is, is we're going to see what kind of interesting effects that has on use outside of its intended band. Now for this test we're going to use a MFJ266 which does VHF and UHF and this is this is actually much easier to maneuver around than a, uh, a radio and check and reflected power and we're just going to use a magnetic mount base here and we're going to mount it on a vehicle Okay, so what you can see here is is that we're pretty much at resonance at about 176, 175 megahertz. So, as we drop our frequency, you can see our reflected power goes up. So, when we get down into the amateur band here, we can see that our antenna is far too short to where we want to have it at. But, the match is something we can work with. Okay, so now by replacing the resonator with the longer one from the elevated feed, we can see that our reflected power, or that our standing wave ratio rather, is well within acceptable range, both in band and slightly out of band all the way up into the commercial spectrum here so that will work a-okay well let's go with what we do know we do know that the one from the elevated feed antenna works good as is and we know this one here is too high a frequency so we can see our difference in, in lengths here we can see our coils are extremely similar so what we're going to do is, is we're going to come up with a way to extend this antenna here. This is what you can do. As you can see here, we've got them both laid out. What I've done is, is I've lopped off a piece of another resonator that I had. Uh, and if you didn't have a resonator, just find a nail that's roughly the same diameter as that and just cut the end of it off. Just any piece of, of um, rigid conductive material will work for that. And then the way we're going to couple it together is simply with a DC motor coupler. 
Uh, you can get these at hobby shops. Uh, sometimes uh, your more well-equipped hardware stores will have these things. And what we're doing is, is we're just basically hooking these two together. Now these do use set screws to retain it. And in order to make it grip better, what we'll do is, is we'll go ahead and we'll file flats into both sides of these rods here. The depth of halfway into the coupler itself. So basically we just want to make this as strong of a mechanical coupling as possible. Essentially I just made a couple of flats. I did a flat on this one and on the other extension rod. And then we couple these together with the Allen screws. And we've coupled it together just like it was a DC motor shaft, which is strong. Now, this one also, if so desired, you could add a couple of other set screws to the other side of it here to strengthen the connection up if you desire to. And then we just go ahead and place it in our base and tighten it up. And we have a nice, solid mechanical connection. And you can see that we're very close to the same length of the original one. Of course, the coil location is different, but that's not going to be so important with a, um, just using it for VHF. Okay, you can see our performance is really good. Uh, this is the mid-band going low. Let's see, 1, 5 to 1, going up. One four to one, so this antenna is working out well. Covers the entire band. Okay, well we have our VHF quarter wave made out of the 800 5 8 wave, and okay, let's say we want to make a UHF antenna. Bam! We just cut another resonator. Uh, remember that you're at UHF frequencies. It's about six and a quarter inches at the 70 centimeter band and at GMRS it's uh, just over six inches so generally around six six and an eighth inches gets you within both ends of the uh, UHF band but considering the stack height of this mount right here we had to subtract some for it so what we'll end up doing is is between five and a half and five and three quarter inches Of resonator gives you an effective UHF quarter wave. Okay, now you can see the performance of our UHF resonator here. Going all across the spectrum here. You can see it's good in GMRS. and good in the amateur spectrum. Now let's see if we can make ourselves a dual band antenna with two of these 800 megahertz 5 8 wave resonators which these are from a different manufacturer antenna but uh, so what we're going to do is is we're actually going to go and we're going to take our antenna and we're going to cut it in reverse so what we're going to do is is we're going to try to get quarter wavelength with this mount or UHF which you can see right here at the base of this coil and we're gonna make our first cut right there okay after we made our cut here you can see how much we've removed and how it's close to our quarter wavelength UHF resonator now the reason why we want to do this with a dual band antenna is essentially when we put this in here and mount it what we want is is we want the length of that whip to be as close to a quarter wavelength as possible at UHF before it reaches the coil. And you can see our length, whoops, our length is right. And now what we want to do is, is we want to bring the overall length of the entire antenna as close as possible to the known antenna that we had here. 
Okay, we know that this one works as is on two meters. We've got a quarter wavelength approximately before the coil here. Now what we want to do is, is we want to bring this length as close as possible to here. So what we can try is, is we'll try our quarter wavelength resonator right here at first that we've cut for UHF as an experiment and see if that will get us in the ballpark. Okay, for using that dual band whip right there, you can see that we're a little high in frequency. So we could definitely use some antenna length because as we go to the lower end of the 2 meter band, you can see that our standing wave ratio increases. So you can see right now we're about resonant at 150 megahertz with that particular overall length of antenna. Now when we check it on UHF, we can see that our antenna is tuned to about 450 and it rises up in the amateur band. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to add a little length by cutting a longer resonator and putting that on there and seeing how that works for us. Okay this is pretty much where we're going to leave it at here because you can see on VHF here we cover the band and at UHF We've had some changes. But you can see that it's acceptable across the band and favoring the high portion of the band up into the uh, GMRS spectrum there. So, this is whenever you start messing with dual band antennas, it's always a compromise. You're always going to get better performance on one than the other. And trying to balance such is critical. Okay, well what we've seen here is is we can make several different amateur radio antennas out of the 800 megahertz 5 8 wave antenna. Uh, we've got the elevated feed which works as an 800 megahertz resonator uh, right off the bat just by putting it in the mount. We have the second quarter wave we made out of the, the standard one which actually came out of this mount here that by taking a three inch section of rod and cutting it and then using a coupler to attach those two together gave us a good two meter antenna. We can make a UHF quarter wave antenna. This right here is a 33 centimeter quarter wave antenna when it's inserted into here. And we have a two meter 70 centimeter dual band antenna that we have made out of two resonators. Now on this one here at the very end you can see you basically cut to just a little under six inches below the coil and then above your coil we're about eight and a half inches. So don't be afraid to do some experimentation with uh, various antenna types and uh, you never know what you're going to find. Just remember, measure long, cut to resonance. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.